In this video, I'm going to show you how I build characters that have hunched over appearances in a way that won't hurt your back. Hi, I'm Kazool and welcome to my lair. Now, a couple of weeks ago, somebody messaged me saying that they were building a character that had similar stature as my Arakoa. Now, I'm really disorganized and lost the message, so I apologize, I can't remember your name, but I am happy to show off how I made the hump of this character, because hiding the human figure inside a creature is one of my favorite things to do, so I'm, I'm happy to share and help other people learn how to do it as well. My dog is out here to protect me, so if she makes a little cameo behind me, just pet her through your screen. So this is the Arakoa that I built in 2014 for BlizzCon. And this is just basically the head structure and the neck piece that I built, um, excluding the cowl of feathers. So you can kind of see the understructure. It consists of two pieces, and this is the head piece that has the face of the creature uh, and a helmet that goes on your actual head. Then there's this collar piece that um, extends the shoulders out wider and creates the hump in the back of the head. Looking closer at this headpiece, the way that I made the face is that I, I sculpted it out of clay, made a mold, and rotocast it in resin. If you open the mouth, you can see the inside is hollow, and I cut the jaw and hinged it with warbler. The helmet itself, if you can see inside, there's some eye holes and a bridge that goes over the nose. And the helmet is also made of warbler. I used a pattern from a YouTuber named Lost Wax. He has an aviator helmet made out of foam that I took and modified his pattern. I cut out the pieces out of two millimeter foam, then sandwiched them each piece in between two sheets of warbler and then pressed it together. Um, it created a pretty nice form-fitting helmet. The only thing I added was a, the faceplate that goes, that covers your eyes to help the weight be distributed around your head. Um, I have these metal standoffs that hold the creature's face in front of and a little bit down below your own face. Now looking at just the collar piece, it has been modified slightly because I recycled and reused this piece inside my hogger costume. So there's a few extra straps that have to do with hogger and not the Arakoa. But essentially I built a collar with EVA foam, just two millimeter thick foam, and I just layered, put a layer of warbler and wrapped it around the edges so it was just stiff enough to create a collar piece. Then I used upholstery foam to build out the hump, and there's some velcro here that attached to the back of the head here to kind of hold it in place and allow it to flex as I move the head. So that was really quick, just an overview of how it was physically constructed. But I wanna go a little bit deeper into the design side of things. So when I decided that I wanted to build an Arakoa for BlizzCon, the thing that I loved about them is they had this hunched over appearance. They were all twisted and they had a little bit of a limp and they had a twitch in their head, which I just loved the movement of that and the appearance of that. And so I wanted that to really come through in the cosplay. And um, I, I actually have scoliosis and it, I didn't want to hurt myself by walking over like this the entire day at the convention. So I wanted to design something where I could stand relatively straight up and down to be able to portray this character so I could be comfortable for most of the time. So 
I started with a photo of myself. Um, I just kind of bent my knees and held a sort of loose position. It was kind of comfortable. It was really just me crouching down just a slightly. And I took it into Photoshop and I drew an Arakoa over the top of it. Now, when I did this, I noticed that my drawing, that I had put the face of the Arakoa forward and down, downwards in front of my face. So that's kind of how I knew in the finished one that I needed to make the head be forward and slightly down. Um, the, there was also like in my drawing a lot of space on the back of the neck and like upper back that needed a lot more padding. So here I'll overlay a video of one of my early tests when I had just attached the, the face to the helmet and built a version of this collar piece. I was really pleased with this video at how well the head moved. I didn't know if uh, putting the head that far forward of my face would cause it to, to be weird and have like a weird look on the neck that was stiff and an awkward pivot point for the head, but it ended up looking really good. So I was really pleased with this initial video. Uh, one thing I did notice in this first iteration was that I really needed to widen my own shoulders uh, to help sell that character because once I had that head and face on that was so big and building up the neck so big, um, my own shoulders got lost. So that's when I took and extended out the sides of my collar piece. So that was essentially it. Once I covered up this structure and draped the clothing over it, um, it ended up looking pretty good. Um, you can see here in this photo, I'm standing pretty much straight up and down and uh, very comfortable, but there's a definite hunch. And all I have to do in my acting is crouch down slightly and to, to emphasize that hunch. Um, but if I need to take a break and stand up straight by myself, it doesn't really break the character that much. But that first step of doing that draw over was really what inspired some of the ideas for what to actually build. And in my later costumes after this one, I actually got a step more sophisticated in doing little maquettes to play with shapes that hid the human figure. So I've got here some examples and I've also done some others where I have just a little human resin figure that I created that I sculpted on top of to test out different shapes. So like an example with Hogger, I was testing out if like how big and exaggerated I could get this hump. Also testing out if my little leg illusion would look good. What I like about the small clay maquette that I used to concept it out is that it's really easy to, to see how much mass you'll have to add and in what direction uh, so that you can really figure out a strong silhouette and, and you can also more easily translate that to the finished costume. Speaking of these little figures, I'm working on a new better one that is much bigger and much better. You can see I quickly sculpted like a little mock up of how I did the Arakoa head on this one. You can find these figures in my Etsy store. This one is the female one and I'm working on getting the male one up very soon. Coming back to my Arakoa, this collar thing, it did work all right. My problems with it are that the, I, this upholstery foam on the back of the head, it, it actually held in a lot of heat and these holes could have been bigger with a different material. Um, and I really didn't get like, like sometimes these would, these ones would sag down. Um, this one was stuck to the head, so it stayed up. 
but it, it just like didn't work. And this piece is actually big and clumsy to transport uh, because it doesn't fold down or anything. So I actually improved upon this design for, uh, let's see, my the 2016 costume that I built, Gen Graymane. So here's Gen, his head is actually built the exact same way as the Arakoa. It's just covered in fur. So you can see inside it's the same Warbler helmet. Um, you can't see, it has the same metal standoffs that hold the head forward. This one I actually put it forward and slightly up of this, I built this for my husband, so I built it forward and slightly up of his head so that he could more easily have uh, his vision out of the mouth. And the back of the neck part, I actually incorporated into his muscle suit. So here's, here's the muscle suit, the nice pecs. This is the back of the neck. It has some Velcro on it, but this time I made it out of EVA foam. This definitely could have stood to be made out of thicker uh, EVA foam. This is actually quite soft. This is a floor mat material. They're very soft and squishy. Uh, a more dense one would have worked a lot better. And also a few more would have worked better too. Um, I still had this thicker piece down at the base because it was resting on his shoulder blades, which are actually beefed up. So his whole back was kind of puffed out a little bit. This one, instead of having the Velcro on the back of the head be the main structural part that, that helped support the head, uh, we incorporated some clips with elastic in the back of the muscle suit that corresponded to some clips with elastic coming off the back of the head. That kind of helped counterbalance the head because this head ended up being quite heavy and wants to fall forwards, you see. So it needed some counterbalance to hold it back. The Arakoa didn't quite have that big a problem because that head is really light. The heavier head, definitely like it. It. This one, um, the, this resin in the front, these teeth are resin, it's really heavy. Um, and the weight was carried on the nose of my husband right here. Not the smartest no move if in the future, like, and if you're doing a hump like this, keep your head as light as possible. Um, this was the last head that I built out of resin. I've since moved on to build them out of foam just to keep them as light as possible. The next costume that I kind of did this method on was the goat man. Now for the goat man, he still had a hump on his back, but instead of his head being forward, his head was set, the, the character's face was set on top of the head. So looking inside, you can see there's that same old Warbler helmet that I've built, but it is underneath the character's face. And this one I used to create the hump on the back of the head. I went even more lightweight and flexible and made it out of uh, corset boning. So there's some corsets here, kind of like the same principle as making a bustle. Made some corset boning that help hold out the back of the neck to meet the hump that was on the muscle suit. And here's the muscle suit. That you can see this black layer right here. That's the end of the cat suit that is built on and there's this hollow cavity that I built and built up a structure out of uh, foam. Uh, we actually, when we went to conventions, we hid frozen water bottles back there. It not only cooled my husband down, but we had extra water at the convention. Um, but yeah, there's a quite big cavity just built up with foam, but that sticks out about six inches from my husband's back, so the corset boning on the back of the head like helped bridge that gap and meet that and create like a kind of appearance of a bulked up 
muscly neck for this character. So that's similar to the hump of the other ones, but you can see like it's still the same principles that I've carried through all three of these costumes, just modifying them slightly to create a, a subtly different look. So I hope you enjoyed that look into how I build humped characters without hurting my back. Like I said, that's a really important principle to me to keep yourself upright for the most part while wearing your costumes so you don't injure yourself or get tired out too quickly. That's all I have for today. Make sure to leave comments for any topics you'd like to see me cover or have questions about. I'm, I, I feel good. I've been in a good pattern of, of making videos lately and I want to keep it up. So please give me a like and subscribe if you're not just so you can keep watching what I make. And I've actually been brewing my next big project and it may or may not be uh, one of my other favorite games of all times that isn't Blizzard. So maybe I'll leave you a little hint right at the end of this video if you watch to the very end. With that out of the way, I hope to see you again. I'm Kazool reminding you to embrace your inner beast. Here's my dog tax. Come here. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Okay, let's go.